about. Dog. Obviously. So the whole thing is like for like I said, the hope for people to start to really see. And and another thing I want to hold on to is Kwame being able to trust himself and, and being able to go within himself. And it's something we have conversation about all the time is is trusting who you are and believing in yourself. Because once you understand that, people can't fool with you. They cannot mm-hmm. mess with your head if you understand who you are. Mm-hmm. Period. Uh, that's, that's real. Yeah, and, and I've been, like, uh, going through kind of, like, having that that guiding principle. You know, like he said, yeah, he keeps saying, oh, I'm my mama's son. And, like, he stand on that. Like, he, he like, I, I know who I am type deal. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's real. You got you to gotta have something that that you can't you don't deviate from to, mm. to make sure you know where you're at for yes. sure mm-hmm. but the whole thing is you have to be able to do the work and the work comes is as he as he says as you shut everything off cut everything off media phones whatever and just focus on yourself Did you hear that? Yeah. Okay. I wonder what, what made it say that. I've never said that before. Nah, yeah, I've never seen that before. Yeah, I don't know. This camera thing hooked up to it. I don't know if it's been doing, I don't know mm-hmm. cool stuff, I guess. Um, But yeah, what you, you were saying, Stephen A is one that, that stir up commotion, huh? Yeah, he stirs up a lot of, uh, he, he's, when you see the clips, you know, he's usually the guy behind the, the little five second or the 10, 15 second outtakes. <laughs> making making people upset he is definitely the guy behind there man yeah and let me see i share my screen here i don't know i'm I'm gonna pull this 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 video here and let's see what he's talking about it's two right here it says Kwame violates stephen a smith channel for speaking bad on black athletes all right, all right. I'm gonna go with the four minute clip because that, that that seems like we can digest that one. Speak something, Stephen A. Smith. Okay. Can you have hear? You it? Seen, have you seen these already? Is it? Uh, nah, I've seen okay. some of them. Okay. Uh, I just like honestly, I'm, I like the way he talks, like the way his confidence in himself, and like I don't want to give you too much, but I mean I might as well talk about it a little bit. But like, you know, they, they talk about like he was a bust and mm-hmm. that he didn't live up to his potential, but he was the first, the first guy to get drafted at 18. You know what I mean? Like out of mm-hmm. high school. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people felt like he didn't live up to his potential, quote unquote, to whose standard, but he right. played in the league for 10 years. That's not a mistake. Right. That don't sound like a bust to me personally. Uh-huh. Like. You know, because, you know, we play football. You play high school. I play college. Right. I played undersized, and, and the NFL was the, the goal. Right. How could I ever criticize somebody who made it to the NFL? I don't care when they got drafted or, or what was their potential or what you thought they should have done, but did you get there? Right. That's always yeah. my question. That's always my question. I said that to a kid the other day because the coach that I trained with, he played and he made it to the NFL. He got injured. And one of the kids was making a joke about, oh, something about him riding the bench. I'm like, you do it. You <laughs> ride the bench. Wow. That's you hilarious. know what I'm saying? Like, people people try, like, try to, like, you know, I guess throw shade or rain on somebody's parade. Like, dude was 18 years old mm. and got drafted into the NBA. How many got people drafted number wish one. they can do that? He got He's one of one. many few people in the world. All right. You know what I'm saying? So I always thought that was kind of weird. So for this to start to come to light, you know what I mean? And I, I think it's pretty cool that he was he was able to be quiet all that time and not say anything, like, or not make a big deal about people talking about him. And right. now I guess that, you know, somebody said the right thing at the right time 
And he's like, okay, I got a platform now. Forget y'all. I'm putting everything out. Right. <laughs> you know Since what I'm saying? So all that stuff that he saw behind the scenes in the locker room, he's he not exposing, he's not going that far, but he's exposing the media mm-hmm. for like controlling information and not telling people the truth about athletes. This is some of the same conversations that we have. That's why I thought it would be like perfect for this. So let's see what he let's see what he's talking about. When you're right, you fucking right. Mm-mm-mm. Uh-uh-uh. Stephen A., come here, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen A., come here, bitch. I'm not going to let you out of this shit like that, boy. Oh, no. Oh, no, bitch. You won't be taking no high road, motherfucker. You talked about mama's only son. Not mama's only son, but you talked about my mama's son, motherfucker, for over. Kwame Brown feels when you say Kwame. His Do I get that? So can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to let you watch this video. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna try to find another one because this one is short, pretty short. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is like of how Stephen A has been kind of building up everything. And Jalen Rose in this clip is basically like defending him. Like, you'll see. I'm gonna let you, you know, you watch. Mm-hmm. And then hopefully I can find the clip of Kwame defending himself. The, the sound again. I don't know what you did. To Why? You because you're Kwame Brown. You're Steve Brown feels when you say Kwame. His Do I get to answer was... this or is these, are these rhetorical questions? Sure, go ahead. Do I get to answer it or are they just rhetorical questions? Go ahead. Let me tell you something right now. Kwame, all right, I'm going to tell you why I say Kwame Brown or Rosho the Slaver of Slava Medvedenko. I'll tell you why. Because you're Kwame Brown. You're seven feet tall. You're the number one overall draft pick, okay? You come into this league, you came in without a jump shot. You came in without the ability to rebound. You came in without the ability to do nice footwork, to pass, to rebound, to defend, to score points, or whatever the case may be. And it's a decade later, and you're still that dude. You've never worked and put forth your due diligence in order to take advantage of the privilege, opportunity. My question is, can you hear what he's saying? Yeah, I, I hear him. Who is he to say that? <laughs> is he a coach? Or is he That's like crazy. a strength and conditioning guy? Or he's just a guy taking pictures with a microphone? That's I'm just saying. Too, yeah, I mean, dead. I'm not knocking what he does, like reporting. Right. Is he there at the facilities working out with those guys in the weight room? That's just my question, you know? He's, yeah, and it's, it's funny too. He said all that, but with, with all that being said, he still got drafted number one, so he had to have something. You know, <laughs> that's crazy. This is what when is this? When I see that level of consistency, consistency as it pertains to an aptitude, I'm gonna call somebody out. If a dude is playing like garbage. You don't sit there and point out he's playing like garbage? Of course I do. You don't sit do, there and point out how but, he's but not the, living up to expectations? I don't want to get away from what we're talking about because th- that's that's what makes this Oh, great. I'm staying I on the point. I'm right here. Form. But I'm there, right here. there's a difference between reporting what you see in the box score at the game or calling someone a scrub. Like, if I make... But he the, is a well, scrub. Not if he's a scrub. No, no, no. I do no. Kwame Brown may be a scrub compared to Shaquille O'Neal. And if he's able to maintain one of those jobs for 10 years, there's no way he can be a scrub. Relatively, he's a scrub. No, what? There, no he what? can't be. Are you, if, what, did if, you if, just if, say if, that with if, a straight face? If, if he, 
Did do, you do, just say do, that with a straight face? Do you face? guys do you guys realize that somebody's paying him millions of dollars to play basketball? Unfortunately, they are. Okay. Jalen, answer my and question. Why, why, do you think, why, why do you my think? Why do you think? Why do you think the guy that's ten through fifteen on the bench is able to have Jaylen, a long career? Answer my question. He's got to have some skill set. Right? Right? I think they're saying Jaylen relative Rose. to the other players. Stephen A is not going to stop till you answer it. So hello, go ahead, Stephen A. Hello, hello, Jalen. Jalen Rose, star, all American in high school, played in the finals, can ball. You trying to tell me that you don't know a scrub when you see a scrub? I you absolutely. You're trying to tell me I that everybody in the NBA can play? Are you sitting there with a straight face who, and you're saying to me uh, that right, everybody in the NBA can play? Who are we comparing them to? Who, like, who are we comparing them to? I'm just saying, we're comparing them to If you're, if you're going to compare NBA Slava Medvedinko to Hakeem Olajuwon, Jaylen, he doesn't have a chance. You should if you're going to compare me yourself. to Magic Johnson, you should be a shame you can say, Jalen, but, but everybody has naysayers, Stephen A. And so what will my naysayers say? Hold on, no, 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 no. What we're is he talking about? He's no Magic Johnson. He doesn't know anything. It works all. It works both ways. Okay, so I, 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 we speak in fact. If you seven feet tall, two hundred and seventy pounds, you trying to tell me there is not some dude in the NBA that's there strictly because of their size? What? He said that he's speaking facts. It's funny, he just only... says something that is not <laughs> factual. <laughs> The only dude that that's played on the floor is the only one that's providing like a a real perspective. That's hilarious. <laughs> and this is and this is the, I'm telling you, if we go back and look at like what we talked about about like the perception of what the media does, and this is just a, in in the sports realm, and this is ESPN with the highest, the biggest platform. Let's just say that. Mm -hmm. and On sports level right yeah so mm -hmm. whatever he says because he's the loudest is not because he's saying facts <laughs> because the guy loudest. that's giving facts is the guy that plays basketball mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they're shutting him down because he feels some type of way about a guy because he feel like a guy should be playing to his standards to whatever what's to what standards are those i mean i, I don't know all right you know what i'm saying but this is the, the the what's being shaped in these just say the, the the new generation of kids or the new generation of athlete or new generation of sports fan. This is the mindset of you know of what's being shaped. You know what I mean? And it's and it's all talk backed by nothing. It's just because I have a big platform, I can say whatever I want, and people are gonna back me, whether it's true or not. You know what I'm saying? And, and and the question is, like, how did we get into that type of reality? And the, the next question would be, as I look for the, the Kwame to defend himself, because just like Jalen was defending himself, I mean, I mean, de defending his, you know, NBA uh, his, partner. His fellow, right? His fellow, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he was basically saying, like, this is a hard league to get into. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you don't get drafted number one by mistake. And right. even if you do get drafted number one by mistake, you don't play 10 years. By yeah, exactly. No, that's a, he said 10 through 15 on the depth chart too. So like, you know, right. he's, he's not, he's getting, but he's, but he's consistently there for, for 10 whole years. And a lot of, shoot, a lot of those guys, even especially the number one picks, you, you got that first contract. If you don't do nothing by that first contract, you might have another like three, four years. Right. You might. And then we might not ever hear from you ever, again. ever, ever. Ever again, you know what I mean? And I find that odd. Like I said, I've always found that odd to call him a bust. And like I said, I don't really like to, like, because we, we talked about it on the last one. And I, I told you, like, even the last guy on the bench can ball. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I mentioned that. Like, you know, it's just whether they give him the opportunity to ball. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I never really like to critique a guy that made it to the highest profession at his craft like right. what who are you unless it's his teammate or coach critiquing him or the guy signing his paycheck who are we <laughs> that, that it's <laughs> it's funny like the the platform it, it damn near like make you forget you're a fan too 
<laughs> right. Like that's all he is is a because he gets to scream on TV. Man. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> this dude is crazy. This is a. I wonder what year this clip is from. This looks a little bit older. Like it's probably a couple years ago, right? They give up too much to get a guy who has been labeled soft. Is that a trick? This, so did this originate from, because uh, cause from what I understood, I guess Matt Barnes had said something on his podcast about, about him, and that's kind of what triggered all this? Yep, yep. That's what, um, what triggered everything. Um, Matt Barnes in the podcast, um, and, I, and I watched – I watched the one with Gilbert Arenas, but I didn't watch it all the way through. I missed that part of it. Um, but I think Matt Barnes, oh, no, I heard I heard the clip. Matt Barnes was interviewing the owner of the Lakers, I think Jenny Buss, and they mentioned she mentioned the trade of trading Paul Gasol and Kwame Brown to whoever. I don't remember what the trade, mm -hmm. um, but the Lakers were making the trade. And when she mentioned Kwame Brown, he was like just Paul Gasol. He was like basically shutting dude down. Like, <laughs> and um, Stephen Jackson co-signed, and mm -hmm. he I guess he he played with Stephen Jackson and knows Stephen Jackson personally. So he mm -hmm. I guess he called to text him like, dude, why are you doing that? Why are you like being extra? And he was like, you know, we just playing this TV and this that and the third. And so he was just like, you know what, f that. So I'm joking too, and he just started going. And I'm about right. to, um, matter of fact, I'm gonna play one for you right here. We, we, uh, you got time, I got time. I'm gonna play it for you. <laughs> um, and and if he say Becky with the good hair, he talking about Matt Barnes. He he very rarely refers <laughs> to Matt Barnes. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Barnes. He calls Matt Barnes Becky Ooh. with the good hair. <laughs> that's I thought great. that was so funny, man. And, and that's hilarious. Let me um, he's a funny dude like on the low like i'm like damn why they never give this dude the camera like <laughs> funny let me just play it so you can you can hear him out people time writing and sending checks to vendors each month and listen up i don't give a fuck about what that nigga post he do it for the show i'm for real but like i say let me address this hey listen people if y'all can't see that these people are like john mayer say they control the information so they can bend it all they want these people been talking about me for 20 motherfucking years and the moment i start talking back speaking some truth and exposing what they actually do. Now I can't say nothing. Now they the victim. Now Jamel Hill, an educated black woman that hang around all motherfucking white people. I done seen your pictures. An educated black woman gonna try to text me, a man with a third eye, a Geechee. You wanna tell me that you say I choose violence. What the fuck does that mean, ma'am? I'm a black man in America. You're going to put I choose violence this weekend and then turn around and say, oh, I meant you. Uh, I didn't mean you choose violence. Or choose. What the fuck are you talking about? That don't make no motherfucking sense. You keep perching and getting putting your putting me in your business when I don't got nothing to do with you, man. I know your kind. You a cold switcher. <laughs> I know your kind. You talk black, but everything about you white. You get mad at white women for cold switching and, and, and cultural appropriation, but you a, a black woman that probably, <laughs> like Stephen A, peel your ass back and there's a Becky up under you too. Because that was uncalled for, man. I'm sitting here talking about how the media is demonizing black males, and it's interesting, your choice of words was violence. See, you've been, y'all been able to disrespect black males with no recourse this entire time yeah but that's over with bitch ass Stephen A you was you was the loud mouth nigga talking about me 
for 20 motherfucking years and now you running with your bald head ass tail tuck bitch you had everybody thinking you were some expert and you knew the game and bitch you can't even play the game y'all we are in a simulation y'all have to stop this shit who gives a fuck about matt barnes and what he talking about over there that nigga, he probably high. Nobody give a fuck about what he talking about. That nigga gonna do it for the great way to be at. Nigga, shut your goddamn mouth. I done told you, Becky. I like when you reply. I might go look at your page so I can chew your ass up again, you punk. I done told you, boy. That's your male ego. Well, that's that feminine ego that won't let it go. You done got ass smacked around. I don't know why you keep talking. You said we were joking. You can't joke that good. So stop talking. It's not going to go nowhere else. You niggas always trying to make it something else. I ask you gentlemen like men, what is this, man? You shouldn't talk to me like that. You punk bitches say we was joking, motherfucker. I've been getting joked on for 20 years. Can you hear, can you hear everything? No, I can, I can hear it. Yeah, I was uh, muted myself. But... No, I'm talking but you can you, yeah. say you can hear it? No, yeah, I can hear it. Oh, I just wanted you yeah, to hear what he's saying. See, that part where he's talking about, he joking, right? I told you, like, he called them, and they were like, no, nah, mm -hmm. we just joking. We just joking. <clears throat> and and, and he's like, shoot. He, he's tired. You know what I'm saying? He's tired of being mm -hmm. a brother. Everybody joke. And, and like, right. that's a perspective that dude was a bust. You know what I'm saying? Because right. his peers don't really think that. It's only those guys are saying that because, the now, people from the you know, outside, right? Yeah, they want clickbait, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever. I mean, they want people to watch. Let's say that, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I and it, I kind of fell into the, um when I first, like, because I told you at the beginning, I didn't really know too much about it. I was like, all right, this this guy is kind of hurt. You know, he's he's going off, you know, if you've been talking about him, I get it. But but also, too, I think, you know, he's he's talking about, like, just – his name and stuff like that too, you know, like just respecting his, uh, I, I kind of see where he's coming from in that regard, you know, as a man, you don't really have too much else. And he just like, yeah, like he said, 20 plus years, damn, and just being the, the butt of that joke for sure. You thought that was going to hurt my feelings, punk bitch. You've been getting joked on for three days and now you motherfuckers talking about his smoke is the <laughs> bitch. It ain't no smoke. Shut your bitch ass up and it won't be nothing else. You said we were joking, bitch. The more you talk, the more I'm a joke about your real life, punk. Inadequate ass bitch. You don't feel black. He black. He white. He stuck to you. Yeah, yeah. You confused motherfucker. Shut up. Always want to join a call, punk motherfucker. Tired of niggas like you anyway. And Jamel Hill, you need to stop that shit. Don't try to pretend like you like black people. Where your black husband at? When the last time you dated a black man that sound like me? It not sound like this. Yes, you're a queen. You do every day you want. You just talk over me. Fuck out of here. You ain't going to talk over me. And I wasn't talking to you, ma'am. Because I got my mama's cooking. Now you stay over there and sit over there on the sideline, please, ma'am. Thank you. Fuck you talking about. Y'all with me. Some of you women are always trying to interject yourself so you can be disrespectful. I don't even think you like men, Miss Hill. But you always talking about one. How would I look if I'm always talking about something that I don't like? Come on now. You don't like men. Hush. And if you did like men, when two men are talking, you still supposed to do what? Hush. But nobody ain't never taught you that. You think you just, you were one of them badass little girls that were just with your pigtails and you were smart and you kept like a little gnat, just kept interrupting. If your daddy was there, he would have said, hey, honey, go in the other room. There's men in here. And he would have lit a cigar. But that didn't happen in your life, did it? Bunch of women just dominate men, ain't it? That didn't happen over here in my life. So stop trying to make me deal with your rules. You respect me, I respect you. I wasn't talking to you, ma'am. Now, we gonna get respect back going on around this bitch. And this don't got nothing to do with thugs. This don't got nothing to do with none of that. Y'all so used to not seeing a man. That's why they didn't put a man on TV in a long time. Other than Shannon Sharp and a... He's spitting. <laughs> That's why I told you I wanted you to hear it. Mm -hmm. you know, he's not just going to defend himself. Mm -hmm. He's going to explain what's been happening, the perception of him, not just him, of black 
athlete, black right. male athlete, he's going to break it down because he was in the NBA for 10 years. Right. His friends are NBA players, meaning he knows it all behind the scenes that we know nothing about. The average person, you know what I mean? Because right. we see the cameras, but we never see, like, who are they going to talk to in the locker room? Why mm -hmm. are they talking to this person? Why are they not talking to this person? He was one of those that they didn't want to talk to. Wow. Oh, and then now maybe we see why. <laughs> That's crazy. And he's and uplifting mm -hmm. the black community. He's uplifting black males. So why wouldn't you want him to be a quote unquote role model? Remember I told you we had that conversation. That's why I wanted to do this, that they choose who they want to be role models. That's true. They choose who they put the basket, they like they who they give the basketball to to dominate the ball because that's the person who they want to put on the billboard. Because mm -hmm. all of them can ball. I'm not knocking the, the biggest, the Hall of Fame. I'm not knocking them. But given the right opportunity, a lot of those guys can, can fill those roles. But it's a perception thing. But whoever controls that information and that media and the way you see it can control how you think about the game and who's good and who's not good if you don't really understand how to analyze the game for yourself. If you look at this guy numbers, I think he said he averaged, what, 19 and 9 one year? And he's a oh, boss? Okay. I, was, I thought you said In the one. NBA? He was breaking down numbers of like, like, um, this is why he's really, I think I know some part of why he's upset. He was breaking down the numbers of like centers. And he was mm -hmm. talking about the year when DeAndre Jordan, you remember when DeAndre Jordan was with Lob City? When he, yeah, when he was, and he got that big contract. Mm -hmm. His numbers was identical to DeAndre. He couldn't get no money because mm -hmm. they kept calling him a bust. That's crazy. Uh. Because his agent was trying to get him money, but they was like, no, because the perception of what the fans would think of him getting paid that much because people oh, think he's a bust. That's, I never that's thought of messed it like up. That. No, that's a fact. They because they already pinned him on that on that bus tip. That's crazy. And you he didn't control, he has no control. Like you you have no control over where you get selected or like what team you go to type stuff. Cause, Nothing. Yeah, that's and crazy. he was 18 when he did mm -hmm. it. Dude, yeah, he's Man. sitting on a lot of information now. He's sitting on a lot of info. Over time. I was watching the uh but he I was gonna say I was watching the the last dance track. I'm I'm very late on finishing it, but uh -huh. it's like it's it's crazy too because this builds on like like when you just watch kind of how the media and stuff is just like attacking Mike and stuff like that, and really just the players in general. Like now, obviously, it's a completely different league. Like it's cool that the the players have a more of an opportunity to like speak up on stuff like that and kind of okay you can like shoot away the media and stuff but mm -hmm. he was not a part of that era so now <laughs> damn near he's getting his, his chance to i mean do that yes a little bit no. too yes and no as you as you listen to him mm -hmm. you'll understand why yes and no they can say certain things they still can't say what they want to say mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's still because they'll get they'll still get like kind of you know or muted or whatever the case you want to be, or you know, they try to make them conform. And as he speaks, Somebody. you'll you'll see. Cause he, like I said, he's exposing them because he's like, look, stop talking about me. If y'all don't, I'm gonna just I'm rolling it out. I'm just gonna keep pushing it. <laughs> I mean, he's just gonna just put out the real information. And the crazy we wanna thing is, see it. Huh? I said we wanna see it. <laughs> we wanna see it. They, we want all the info. they said dude has gained thousands of followers in like in days. Mm -hmm. because of this so obviously people want to see it mm -hmm. they want to hear it they want to hear it from from the horses like he was there he saw mm -hmm. everything and what's i'm gonna tell you this too because you said you watched the last dance i i haven't i didn't watch that i watched okay. mj enough when i was a kid i don't need to honestly <laughs> his own. that's fair i yeah i've done i mean i was i've seen enough of it like and i'm not trying to knock him but he has the reason why as I listen to his story, why his story has always been twisted is because of Michael Jordan drafted him. Mm -hmm. And 
Michael Jordan wanted, they said Michael Jordan wanted to trade him because mm-hmm. he was on the Wizards team when Michael was playing, was, was in the office, in the front office too. Right. And he wanted to trade him for Elton Brand, and mm-hmm. they didn't do that. So Mike was mad. So in return, Mike being mad, Mike treated him like shit. Like crap. And he was saying, and I saw one of the videos where he was saying like, you know, there was there was being um, like working him out before the games. He didn't even really get to play type stuff, you know, basically like hindering his performance, you know, in that way, too. So he couldn't even like I said, that first contract year and eh, that kind of, you know, he, he, he was damn near getting screwed out of that. Right. On right. his own. Right. Just because like what he was saying was they wanted to control the narrative and not to make Michael Jordan look bad. Mm hmm. You know what I'm saying? For like drafting him or whatever, you know, so the whole narrative was, you know, they Michael Jordan didn't want a young guy. He wanted somebody else or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. So I guess I'm going to make this guy look bad. And being that Michael Jordan had a lot of power within the media, All the power. they ran with it. They ran with it, you know, from mm-hmm. his perspective, from what I've been watching. So let's see what else he's he's talking about. Even he has to be restrained a little bit. He know what I'm talking about. I like the fact that he smoked blacks and he looked like somebody that I grew up around. It's sad how you motherfuckers always got to have the same old, I'm the smart guy and I just got to tell everybody, I got to out intellect everybody. I'm going to talk to you like a woman and you can't touch me. But nigga, nobody want to hear that shit, boy. Nobody want to hear that goddamn shit. You motherfuckers trying to make a new world. Everybody calling me now. Just the other day, wasn't nobody calling me. Why don't y'all text me? You wasn't looking for me before? Just text my motherfucking phone. Stop trying to call me. Text my goddamn phone. I'll get back to you, please. Thank you. Everybody want to be a part of something, boy. So, <laughs> when, when Stephen A calling me a bus, kicking me in the ass, talking all that shit, my motherfucker ain't giving me one call. 18 year old kid, everybody talking down on me. <laughs> I had to goddamn go off by myself and recenter and realize who I am. I'm my mama's mm. something. So, you know, now you. Hey, hey, remember what I always talk about going within, mm-hmm. trusting self. Mm-hmm. Through all of that, his environment of people attacking him. He had to go within himself to right. understand. That's what I keep telling you. That's what I keep telling people. Once you end up, once you realize your strength, can nobody touch you? Mm-hmm. Not even mm-hmm. words of the whole world. This guy was getting attacked by the whole world. Basically, I mean, in this, the whole NBA world, right? Yes. He was like, you know what? Forget that. I have to learn who I am and make it through this. Yeah, when he, when he said that, yeah, I, that's why I was like, yeah, when he said that, because that's, that's definitely a point that you always touch on, too. And I'm sure that because of that, that's probably why he was also able to keep pushing and have that 10-year career, because a lot of guys, you know, they, they succumb to the to the pressure before, right. before that, that time. Like he said, he had to realize who he was. Right, you know what I'm saying? And that's dope. So let's see mm-hmm. what else he's talking about. You motherfucker want to call homie. You got a platform now. Homie, I can help you with a deal. Homie, shut your bitch ass up too. You wasn't helping me with psychological problem when this bitch ass nigga was running his motherfucking mouth. You ain't helped me when I knew I couldn't say shit to MJ. You ain't helped me when I knew the whole motherfucking world knew about what was going on. Everybody around that inner circle knew exactly what the fuck was going on. And they was waiting for an 18 year old kid to crash and burn. But I was smarter than all you bitches. And now I'm back home. <laughs> and I'm not mad. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm not depressed. I'm not sad. I know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. And that's why you bitches keep cutting off my lives. That's why none of you motherfuckers want to talk to me. Because you know, if I wake these kids up, all you bitches going to get fired. All y'all do is every day is breed destruction. Tell kids they can't do it. Some white man over top of them. And you got to go outside and be scared. You a motherfucking liar. You ain't scared, bitch. I don't go outside and be scared. I go outside smoking weed, all kind of shit. The fuck you talking about? It's a good life. It's how you choose to live it, motherfucker. Y'all some crybaby bitches. Some of you. Not all. 
And we tired of you motherfuckers getting paid for fucking with people. We tired of you motherfuckers getting paid for telling kids they can't do it. We tired of you motherfuckers who successful and not telling us how the fuck you got successful, but keep telling us we can't do something. Cause it's funny how you motherfuckers pockets and stomachs keep getting fat, but it's kids out here getting dumber and dumber. No offense. Fourth grade reading level is real. Tired of this shit. You niggas, most of us black males get up every motherfucking day and we being left behind. We ain't dealing a motherfucking thing. You niggas keep spending all your money on belts, shoes, and hats and white folks sitting there laughing at y'all dumb ass. You keep goddamn putting on pretty clothes and pretty shoes that you motherfuckers don't own. You, you hear that? Uh oh, yeah, you now he's getting the into culture. He's, he's spitting right now? To the nah, community? Nah, yeah, you know, he's getting into culture. He's digging in now. He's digging. Yeah. Why do you think they never put a microphone That's crazy. in his face? So, yeah, so, so the thing is, what's going on? Like, as far as like who's controlling the media, why, if it, if it is a narrative out there, why isn't a guy like this who's preaching community to, to, to black men and, and he's not talking about killing violence. He's not talking about, he's talking about owning and, and, and stuff like this. Why is, why, why, why can't we hear what he's saying? He was the number one pick. Mm -hmm. Wow. He's number one pick for a reason. Cause they go, they go to combines. They do workouts. They, they do, they do, they do, they do diligence. Let's just say mm -hmm. that any league, mm -hmm. any league, before they pick you, oh, they gonna study how you move, how you think, everything. He was the number one pick. Mm -hmm. So that means he has some type of intellect about him. And of course he's athletic. He was an athlete. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So At the highest level. At the highest level. So why couldn't we hear this man that's speaking now? Why can't the kids hear him? So what if he's saying curse words he's just speaking with passion that's what i call it yeah that, that's a you know what i'm saying but he's game right now i gotta rewind a little bit let's see he's spitting that game tired of this shit you niggas most of us black males get up every motherfucking day and we being left behind we ain't building a motherfucking thing you niggas keep spending all your money on belts shoes and hats and white folks sitting there laughing at y'all dumb ass you keep goddamn putting on pretty clothes and pretty shoes that you motherfuckers don't own and when they shut the lights off around this motherfucker you bitch ass nigga gonna be crying and running to a nigga like me <laughs> Stupid motherfuckers. What the fuck Jack gonna help you with? You see how he talked to me? <laughs> you look like you think that nigga gonna help anybody? That bitch ass nigga don't help nobody. All he wanna do is stand in front of pretty cars, make holes, make he look good. Shut your ugly big tooth Roger Rabbit ass up, nigga. And you little Becky with the blonde hair, I really wanna be done talking to you. Cause you dangerous, boy. Anybody that been emasculated like that around you, you probably got impotent issues, nigga. Can't even get it up. Goddamn team, you done saw, uh, <laughs> it's sad too, because uh, you done saw the man shower and everything. I hope he ain't bigger than you. <laughs> you done saw the man shower. Now you got to know this man putting that lava to your lady. And you think you going to talk to me, bitch? You better shut your motherfucking mouth. I done told you that, boy. You better shut your goddamn mouth. You niggas keep trying to group up on me. I'm going to individually tear you niggas ass up, because we joking, right? I told you, nigga, you can't joke better than me, nigga. I used to walk up the street barefoot of you, dumb bitch. How the fuck you gonna joke better than a nigga like me? You know what type of jokes I had to come up with to make somebody laugh when I ain't have shoes on, you stupid motherfucker? <laughs> you niggas done stepped in that quicksand. I done told you, nigga. I was trying to hide all this shit because I didn't want you punk bitches to see me. Because just like Bigfoot, everything that's different, they try to put in a cage. Y'all remember that. Everything that's unique and different, it could be minding its own motherfucking business. They discover a new goddamn animal somewhere, and it's big and beautiful and bold like me. They'll go try to catch it, tranquilize it, put it in a cage. They'll try to kill it, mount it on the wall. 
and it's minding his own motherfucking business. See, they don't like nothing big and beautiful and bold and talking like me. They want us to be weak and needy and crybabyish. And I'm not neither. And Matt, Becky, Rico Suave, Wavehead, <laughs> a perm head motherfucker, Duke Ultra Kick, commercial looking motherfucker. I don't know why you trying to be tough. That's probably why that girl left your ass. I told you, boy, you should have stayed in that Drake light skin lane and been player and took niggas girls. But no, you light skin, but you wanted to be a dark nigga. <laughs> that nigga took your bitch because he real light skin. You know, he stayed light, stayed smooth, he stayed in his lane. You know, he ain't act like a thug like your dumb ass. Stupid little boy. Fuck you over 30 and being a thug. You a dummy. <laughs> Talking tough to grown men, nigga. I don't give a fuck how you talk. <laughs> I asked you niggas nicely, man. I asked you niggas nicely, didn't I? You ain't want to listen. But you listening now. You, you made me get like this for you to listen, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Time for Reggie to karateize your ass. <laughs> I ain't no Becky with the good hair nigga ever check me, nigga. The fuck you talking about? A nigga that look like you? I don't know how you think you tough. You must have been woof. This man here. <laughs> I, hey, look, I know why you want to run around fighting all these niggas and shit, though. <laughs> you having flashbacks. He, he with my ex girlfriend. <laughs> He he getting on the boys, child, man. Hey, he's funny, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so 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 from from that perspective of the the short. Can you hear me? Because it's saying the switching microphone. Yeah, I can hear you. Mm -hmm. Um, from that from that little snippet right there, and what he's saying about the media, Stephen A. Smith, and you know what we talk about, you know, before how perception creates your reality. What do you have to say or what do you think about that from your perspective? Hmm. I think um, definitely if, if you pay attention, you see kind of how the media, uh, you know, especially in sports, that's such a such a big money making like portion of entertainment. You know, you definitely see he, he, he was saying something about Matt Barnes. You definitely see you kind of. To, to get on in media, you know, like people are able to make their own platforms now, but to get on, you know, there's a certain amount of, you know, what's the schmoozing you got to do, if you will, mm. you know, and, and he's, he's definitely on the exact opposite side of that. So you, you see, it's, I, I wonder, it makes me want to dig more because it's like, man, even I would not imagine that the scrub thing had anything to do with that before, but now that it's coming to light, Right. It's like, man, okay, he actually got some stuff to say. Right. You know? Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Because he, he's, he's been around, man, and, and he's seen it all. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, he has, he definitely has a, 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 a lot to say, you know, and as far as, like I, I mentioned to you before, he got the opportunity to see, like, the media firsthand as far as, like, who they choose to talk to and mm -hmm. why they choose to talk to that person. Because as someone's teammate, especially like on a basketball team, which is a smaller group compared to football, we can gang and clip up, um, gang up like offensive line, whatever, or you can drop right. your group of friends. Mm -hmm. Basketball is only like 15 people, if even that much on the NBA squad. So, right. you know, they really get to know each other. So, you know why they talk to this person and why they don't talk to this person. You know what I mean? So you understand like what he mentioned um, before about like the message that the media wanted to portray for some reason was like strong black woman, which is cool. Cause he said, you know, I have a mom but that's not how it happened. Meaning I had to help my mom. She had to have somebody help her. She didn't do the, all this by herself. But you know mm -hmm. how the media likes to portray that, okay, the woman can do everything. That's just a wrong narrative to kind of create. I don't want to say wrong, but you put strain on a lot of families if people really believe that's how people, you know, live their life. And that's his right. mindset of like, no, I'm not putting that story out because I had to work 
I had to do this. I had to help my mom. She had right. help from other people. No, it didn't just happen this way. Cause and what he's trying to bring back is what he said is family structure. You need family. You need man. You need female. Right. You need the family Ooh. together. Ooh. Oh yeah, he's deep. That's real. No, this is real. He's he's yeah. he's real. Mm -hmm. And 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 the question is, why wouldn't they let him speak? Mm -hmm. Like, what do you think? Well, I I I feel like right now a lot of the. Well, you know, the, the, the culture right now is kind of pushing towards that. It's a lot of, like, people trying to do their own thing, people trying to be more individualistic. Yeah, they're pushing, like, oh, you can you can do anything on your own, breaking the – I don't want to – you know, I don't want to push too far in one direction, but it's a lot of funny yeah. stuff being being pushed in the culture right now, mean, funny stuff. They're, they're trying to trying to make people accept a lot of ideas that aren't maybe – let's say like more liberal ideas, like along the lines of the family structure and stuff like right, that too. Right. Like with being able to people being able to, with the, with the strong woman thing and saying that like, you know, the, that that's okay in that family structure and stuff like that. Like, right. It's just a lot of, you know what I'm saying? And they're, they're trying to push against people that are saying stuff like that, you know? Yeah. But why would you push against somebody who's telling that the man, should be present in a home and we all know what young boys need and young girls too mm -hmm. they need their dads they need their fathers let's just be real about it mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and not saying that you just need your father you need your mother too correct you your aunt your uncle your brother your sister you Take get what i'm village. saying right this is a complete thing you know what i'm saying and, and granted this time is unfortunate things happen things happen and what he's saying and other people I've heard before that speak like him is if it doesn't work out, just make sure, you know, the kid can see his dad. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know what I'm saying? Don't take him away or don't make that kid a paycheck. And he mentioned that in one of his, you know, I started to go back and look. I'm like, what is his message? Okay. You yeah. I was going to say, yeah. uh, maybe you're referencing something that I haven't seen as well. Yeah. Too, yeah. Probably. He was uh -huh. like, well, he's speaking to the com community or what you like to call the culture. Mm -hmm. is don't make the child a paycheck mm -hmm. don't just a commodity somebody just mm -hmm. for money you know what i'm saying so he's just basically saying things that make sense mm -hmm. and on that level on the nba level that's they 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 go through that a lot more than probably a lot of regular people for sure so that's real, that's real. <laughs> right right so and 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 his biggest thing with i guess matt barnes and uh the uh steven jackson is what they promote and and then you know they, they i guess the all the smoke and all of that i don't i don't necessarily think it's a, a bad podcast i don't want to say that i thought you know it was, it was something cool but i can understand what he's saying as far as like the mindset of steven jackson or the mindset mm -hmm. of matt barnes because what he was saying that is and i can imagine too like with my teammates that like we were like in a fraternity is just unspoken. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, so certain mm -hmm. things, you know, stay. Certain lines you don't cross. Back. Right. That was his biggest thing. That's why he kept saying in that video, we're going to bring respect back. Cause I, I that's kind of disrespecting your fellow teammate. You played on a team. Right. With him, and you're going to say his, he wasn't, don't say his name in a trade. That's not true because he was in a trade. How can you not say his name? Because they put him in a trade. Right. <laughs> he was there. Nah, so the that's... thing is, like, knocking his relevance. He was like, what the media does is they take black men and they expect them to be a certain way. And when they're not a certain way, they knock them down, they beat them down, they knock them down, they beat them mm -hmm. down, and they make them look bad. And another thing about Stephen A., which I, I, I'll go ahead and find it for you, but what they made Stephen A. do is he went on, like, college tours and on these college tours, he was talking bad about Kwame Brown for 10 years. Going to schools, talking about Kwame Brown's a bust. And he was like, dude, why is that the narrative? And that's why he's really like coming out. Like, you know what? People got to hear the truth now. If they've been doing like, because I guess some of this stuff he didn't know about. So as he started to express himself, people like fans or whatever have been coming out, sending him videos. And stuff, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Or maybe he had been he aware of certain things. Yeah, okay. so he's like coming back, like, whoa. So now he's really like holding no punches 
That's why he's like really talking so passionate because I think some of the stuff he wasn't aware of, like that Jalen Rose video, he just responded to that today. He didn't know that. He didn't see that stuff. I guess he just turned it all off. Like once he found out, I guess they were talking, he was like, man, I ain't watching this crap. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I want to pull that up for you because I definitely want to discuss that, like how, you know, like I always say, perception creates your reality. So the person that's creating your, you know, perception that's giving you the information can control your way of thinking if you're not aware of what they're doing. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So let me and, see if I can. The people that get platform aren't really like, man, we're not screening them to yes. make sure that these dudes are like solid. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's, you know, you could really, as long as you could capture people's attention, it, it, uh-huh. it seems like it matters more than like actually being about something. Or you, know, you, you could be about something, but if you want that platform, you might have to fold a little bit, you know? Yeah. It's tough. Let me see if I can play Stephen A. Stephen A. Smith on college tour, dogging out Kwame Brown. Yes, there we go. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. FIU of all places. Did you say something? I no, to- I was just saying, like, mm-hmm. so this, I mean, this is obviously a little bit older. It seemed like he's going on a college tour. Like, he had something personally against him or something like that. Right. So think about it. Remember when you say you first saw you was like, oh, this dude just butt hurt. It's, nah, it's deeper than that. It is, it's, yeah. It's way deep. They've been dragging been... this man's name through the mud forever. And then he was a professional athlete. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if you were to take away, I guess, him being picked first, and you look at his career, you go, oh, he was a decent NBA player. That's it. If you look at his stats and stuff, he, he mm-hmm. you know, he, he was able to make rosters. Mm-hmm. People wanted him on the team. You know what I'm saying? You don't mm-hmm. sustain that type of time in a league if you weren't any good i'm sorry i never seen it before i never seen i don't it know if i don't uh-huh. i was gonna say i don't know if any other because there's been plenty of people that got picked number one number two that was like you know didn't pan but this is i, I realize now that kwame brown is the only person that i've like consistently heard clowned on and stuff and like sports <laughs> media yeah and i know this may be like like i guess i don't know people could however they want to take it in and I'm not saying that dude's a, a horrible, like, player. I just think that position just didn't suit him well. But he was able in moments and spurts to show that, you know, he can play, but not necessarily that he belonged at that position. And I'm going to use him and Tim Tebow. Like, mm. because honestly, in my, from my perspective of playing football, he was the worst quarterback that I ever seen that didn't get benched. Like, meaning, like, he played three quarters of horrible football. At that point, usually, like, if you're a backup guy, whatever, they go to the next guy. They gave that dude chance after chance after chance. I never seen it in my life. Like, and and I'm not a sports reporter, but I played the game and I coached. So when I was watching him because I liked him in college, I was like, ugh. He was throwing hitch routes to the stands. <laughs> In Denver? Yes. Sheesh. That's the only place they gave him a chance, remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I thought you were talking about when he was in college. No. But, Ooh, yeah. In college, they made it work. They made it work. He, that's right, why I say the system. he can play like it's a system. Mm-hmm. Right? He's like a running back. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He's like a running. He's not a, a guy that you want and sit in the pocket to throw for 20, mm-hmm. 30 times a game. He's not that accurate. Let's just be real about it. Right. So he's the only person that I've ever seen play like at a professional level who were who was bad that they continue to like give an opportunity to. Because even though they can say about Kwame about him being, I don't think we ever watched him on the court play that bad. Like you were mm-hmm. like, oh my God, like he what just wasn't he doing amazing. Out? And you don't really see that from NBA guys. I'm sorry. Guys can have off nights, but you don't see a guy. You're like, what is he doing on the court? Mm-hmm. What is he doing on the court? I'm not going to lie. I said that the other day when I saw uh, Mark Gasol running up and down the court. I was like, geez, man, he, he looked unathletic. Like, um, just you should have seen him at the beginning of the season. He had to, he had to sit for a little bit because he was out of shape. Woo, at the beginning of the season? I know, I know you said what you said about about pro athletes, but 
He wasn't looking too too. Right. Uh, he wasn't looking like he was competing at the highest level. Exactly. Right. So when you see stuff like that, you be like, eh, that stuff you can see. But that guy, we we never witnessed things like that from him. From me personally, my eyes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so you 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 probably watched him more than I was able to. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So let's hear what Stephen A. got to say, so I can take him off this screen. Feet tall, 260, 270 pounds. Ten years in the league, and there is no noticeable improvement whatsoever. <laughs> That's my issue. It's not where you are; it's where you're going. It's not what you've done; it's what you're doing. And when I look at somebody, you have an opportunity to make millions of dollars playing a game for a couple of hours a day. You can't maximize that to the greatest of your ability and make it happen? You can't do that? That's inexcusable, bro. It just is. Again, if you're a scrub, you're a scrub. (laughs) I only say Tiago's splitter because a skit. I mean him no harm from Brazil. Played for Greg Popovich. Your role is to bang and rebound. Can you shoot air balls in the free throw line? I'm not going to hold that against you. <laughs> because that's who you are. I get it. I, I had to stop this. I want to get out of uh, this screen. Because he got all he has all that stuff on there. But, mm-hmm. um, I'll find a way to edit that. But but just to say, say that, right? Dude's over there. And you see what he's doing. Right? And 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 he's talking about you know seizing the opportunity but just say in 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 Kwame's defense what he said is you know is all perspective so he in his case he's saying that Kwame's not good but what's his standard and who is he that's right he probably never watched him practice you know, never, you know what I'm saying? He, he, he seems to, he, he takes a perspective. Like the, the video before where he's talking to Jalen Rose, he made it sound like he's there watching him work out and stuff like that. He knows his work ethic and stuff. Like, I mean, you, you see what he's putting out on the floor. You don't know if he's putting in the work to, to better his game and stuff like that. I mean, he's a pro athlete at, at a certain level. There's a quota that you have to meet to stay a pro athlete. Right, right, yeah. right, right. So the thing is, is like, why 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 create that narrative about somebody who got drafted when they were 18 that's like a huge accomplishment meaning he went to the draft combine and they you know they did their little five on fives or three on whatever they do whatever and he was the best Mm -hmm. so how are you gonna (laughs) knock that and meaning obviously okay you have guys like it's a guy named um, Darko Milicic, I think. Milicic, yeah. Milicic, and um, I can't think of other guys off the top of my head, but Darko is one that I think of. That even if, like I said, I don't like to say that, but if, if you were put a guy in the category of a bust, I would say right. that because how long did he sustain his NBA career? And I might be wrong. I don't like using that word because he made it to the NBA. Like that's, right. that's that makes no sense. Like. For a guy like, let's say for Stephen A, he has the flat platform and he's been doing it for years and he has the ears of the world. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And Stephen A used to play basketball. Mm-hmm. He didn't make it to the NBA. Mm-hmm. It's like Skip Bayless, you know what I'm saying? Like, And, and I watch it and I always watch this stuff, but you know, I, I just like to listen and just hear like what the athletes say and what these guys Versus say. the reporters. Right. Why are we taking the weight of what the reporters say so much in comparison to what the athlete is saying? And now what's happening now, if we're watching this slow shift, these athletes are turning into reporters. Mm -hmm. 
Meaning they're taking their, their actual valid experience and kind of throwing that to the side to join this new fraternity, right? So they can sustain themselves, right? Mm -hmm. And what Kwame is saying, why this is why he's, he's a smart guy. You can say, take it for however you want to take it. And he was like, that's why, you know, when they turn the lights, y'all, y'all going to be coming or running to a nigga like me. What he was saying is, all y'all do is blow y'all money and run to the strip club. Mm -hmm. And I was in the NBA. I wasn't being stupid with my money. I was buying land, buying buildings. I was doing this. And y'all being stupid with y'all money. And he was like, that's why y'all got to go to work. And he laughed. Even, yeah, even after the fact, yeah, after your career, you still got to find something. To... So why do you think they're doing that? Because hmm. they, they have weren't... to sustain their lifestyle. Right. And I'm not saying I know everything, but just from just formulating and watching from afar of the message that he's trying to put out. Like, look, I was smart with my money. You guys weren't. Now you still need somebody to tell you what to do. He was like, I don't have a job. And he mm -hmm. was mentioning, like, I don't want y'all to think I don't work, but I run my shit. Mm -hmm. Nobody tells me what to do. He was like, I have nothing to lose. Y'all started with the wrong person at the wrong time. I let y'all do it for 20 years. I have nothing to lose. Ooh. I work. He was like, I work for no one. That's why he's exposing them. So he has no filter. He, he has no reason to. <laughs> oh, he's going to eat them alive. And I'm just watching with my popcorn. Like, I'm hoping <laughs> people can see. Because the whole thing is, is like, you're basically telling somebody how to think. And that shit mm -hmm. needs to stop. Period. Like, that's mm -hmm. what television does. And a lot of people don't. Him, you know exposing the media as far as what they do as far as what they do to people that look like us mm -hmm. you know what i mean because what you're doing is you're robbing somebody of op an opportunity mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like what happened to him he lost a lot of millions of dollars because plenty because people, people was dragging his name, his name. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so wow, that's crazy yeah, yeah and he and he broke it down to like how the reason why the whole narrative it was one, the Michael Jordan thing. And two, it was the, the him coming out of high school at 18. He was like him being the first pick because there was like, if that, that, if, if he's doing that, meaning he's bypassing a, a whole structure, which is college. Right. right? And you got all these little young black boys. Now what are they going to do next? They're going to be sorry for that. And then more, it's going to be more of it. So they wanted to shut that down. So as you, as we go into, like I said, if you look into it and, you'll see for yourself, you know, his discussion and his ideology behind why they were dragging his name is, is just more than Michael Jordan. It's, it's, it's more than just the media. It's so much to that. And it's more dealing with our community and uplifting the next brother. You know what I'm saying? And that was his mindset. And that's why he's attacking, like, not, I guess, attacking or responding to Steven and Matt now because he feel like that they're they're tearing down black men mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying and they've always been tearing down black men in the media regardless of it, if it's sports he was like let's just talk about sports you guys get into these guys lives look at Deshaun Watson I'm just saying look at Deshaun Watson mm -hmm. I don't we don't know what's going on with that whole situation but even if he was innocent, it doesn't matter. They is is dead. It's blown up. The way they report these things, it is not like they report it to be like, oh, this, that, or they keep it hot. They be like, oh, he yeah, had 20 allegations, this, that. Just make him look mm -hmm. guilty. Just might as well say he's guilty. You might as well mm -hmm. just say it without saying he's guilty. And you we take and you know. take a guy like like Ben Roethlisberger, who had, you know. Uh, so the basically the same issue and he's debating on whether or not to retire